Uh, this video is about the Chinese remainder theorem. I'm looking for a number that when I divide by 3, I get uh, remainder 2. When I divide the same number by 5, I get remainder 3. And when I divide the same number by 7, I get remainder 2. And it ends up that the answer is going to be 23. You could verify that that's uh, the answer. Now, the, the, the way of solving a question like this, because it could get really involved with larger numbers here and larger remainders here. Uh, the first step is to find, um, let's see, okay, I'm going to start with the three. First step is to find a number, get this, it has to be a multiple of the other two things. So some multiple of 35, which if I divide by 3, get something remainder 1. And for now we do it by trial and error. So 1 times 5 times 7 is 35, divided by 3 is not remainder 1. But 2 times 5 times 7 is 70, 70 divided by 3 does have remainder 1. So we kind of keep this number we're going to need it. We do the same thing for the 5. We find a number that if you divide by 5, you get remainder 1. That's a multiple of the other two things, which is 3 times 7, which is 21. Now, 21 already gives remainder 1 when you divide by 5, so it's just 1 here. And we finally do it with the 7. We're looking for something that's a multiple of the other two things you're dividing by, so 5 and 3 is 15. Well, 15 divided by 7 is already remainder 1, so I don't need to have an extra thing there. These three numbers are going to be uh, relevant. Here's what I do with those, with those three numbers. So, we put the 2. That's 70, which left remainder 1 when you divide it by 3. That goes first. Leave space here. Then the, uh, the 21 goes here. That's the number that when you divide by 5, you get remainder 1. And then the 15 goes there. That's the number when you divide by 7, you get remainder 1. This number here so far, um, this, this, this guy is, is 70. This is 21. This is 15. If you add those numbers together, uh, you, you, get, you get 106. 106, if you divided that by 7, 5, or 3, you would get remainder 1. Uh, but I don't want remainder 1. I want remainder 2 when I divide by 3, so I put a 2 here. 3 when I divide by 5, so I put a 3 here. And 2, so that's where that other number goes. So now this becomes 140. This becomes 63. This becomes 30. When you add these numbers together, you get 233. Now, 233 is an answer to this question, and here's why. If you want to know what 233 is, remainder, what remainder 233 has when you divide by 3, notice that this term and this term both have 3's in them. So all that matters is this term. If you divide this by 3, well, we've established that this thing here is remainder 1 when you divide by 3. That's 70. So when I multiply it by 2, I get remainder 2, like I, like I wanted. Likewise, when I want to see what happens when I divide by 5, what remainder do I get? This term and this term don't contribute to the remainder. All that's left is this middle term. This here is remainder 1 when I divide by 5. When I throw this 3 on, it's remainder 3 when I divide by 5. And finally, when I divide by 7, these two terms are not contributing to the remainder. This is remainder 1 when I divide by 7. This is remainder 2 when I throw that guy in when I divide by 7. So 233 is an answer to this question. But I could get a smaller answer by subtracting away a bunch of 3 times 5 times 7. 3 times 5 times 7 
is 105. We want an answer that's under 105. So if I subtract away, what I like to do is do 233 divided by 105 is 2 point something. Put the 2 here. That is basically subtracting away 110 to get the better answer, which is 23. Now the trickiest part Um, the trickiest part is figuring out these numbers that we do by trial and error or I um, give like a chart that helps you do that.